welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next day's program on this e business order management implementation we are into advanced pricing so let me go there and share my screen <clears throat> so let us now have a look at it now <clears throat> So now uh, let us go and then have a look at it. Now we are going to open up one document actually. We're going to open up one document. <clears throat> Along with the e business OEM training. On the e business OEM training, we have one document called pricing attribute management. So we have one document called pricing attribute management. So we are opening up on the main this itself. We are opening up the pricing attribute management on the main uh, folder itself. It is OM training itself is there now. So let me double click and then open it up now. So we are opening it up. So we are going to begin with the list limit actually. With the list limit. So this is known as what uh, this concept is known as what uh, is called what uh, limiting the number of orders. Fine. Let us say I am now going to what I mean, uh, sell my hero Honda. So for the first 1,000 customers, I will now give a 25% discount, actually. I'll be giving a 25% discount for the first 1,000 customers. Afterwards, nobody will get any discount at all. This is called the yearly bird discounts, actually. This is called the yearly bird discount. So we are going to begin our activity with the yearly bird discounts, actually. <clears throat> so go there. So let us now begin there. This is also known as a promotional limits, actually. It's also known as a promotional limits. So we are going to begin this one. <clears throat> so let us go there, and then we will now log in into the system now. there so let us now log in so we are beginning with the list uh, list limit section then go there <clears throat> now go to the pay button noise become okay Hello. Go back to our responsibility of T02, actually. So T02 is the responsibility. We are going over there. And then in this, we are going to begin our list limit section. Fine. Click on the create modifiers. And now go there. Go to the query mode and then let me query all my T02, actually. So this is now inactive, actually. When your phone is inactive, down arrow. So let us now ensure that everything is inactive. F3 is inactive. F4 is inactive. F5 is inactive. D1 is inactive. And then P1 is also inactive. Nothing else is there. So let us now create one thing. One list limit section. <laughs> so I will now go to the what's called um, control L. I will now go to the discount list structure. So go there. I will now the T02. Fine. I will now say list limit. List limit. I have no new number now. My number and name can be same actually. You go there, click on it. I'm not going to click. <laughs> go there. There's a line level discount. <clears throat> and control L. We don't go for what discount. <clears throat> and then make it as automatic. You know, make it as automatic. And go further, go further. Pricing phase is LLA. <clears throat> Fine. LLA is the pricing phase. And go further. And then here, I'm not going to give what? And the product attribute is item number. <clears throat> And then here it is a T02 percentage first item, first sale item, and go there. <clears throat> go there. I'm not giving any what's called any limits on this. No, fine. You can even buy anything, fine. I'm not giving any limits on the, on the what happens, the volume or quality or whatever it is, fine. No, no. I go to the discounts and charges, fine. Go there. I will now go to the application method is for percentage. And then whenever you're giving such uh, what happens, the list limits, fine. That is a yearly bird offer, you'll be giving a huge discount, that is a 30% discount. Commit. So we are committing it. So the moment you commit it, the list limit will be coming up. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? This will not come at all. So this will be grayed out actually. So once when you commit, it will be coming. Now I'm going to limit to only first 100 customers actually. This 30% discount will be available only for the first 100 customers. Actually. So you go there and then see that it is automatic actually. And then click on the list limits. So go there. <clears throat> so we'll know what happens to configure this actually. 
So here, basis is usage. Actually. Basis is usage. Usage is the basis. Fine. Okay. Next is what? Amount. So for our uh, testing purposes, we are now going to have only two such things. No? Only two. Two. Two is the limit. Uh, uh, what is it? Across all transactions. Oh, enforced is what? Across all transactions. Enforced is, sorry. Enforced is across all transactions. Amount is two. Actually. Across all transactions. Amount is going to be two. Fine. Amount is two. So constraint one is what? Qualifier attribute. Constraint one is what? You will get qualifier attribute. And then context one is customer. <clears throat> customer. So it's customer. And then afterwards, what was attribute one? Attribute one is what? Uh, customer name. <clears throat> customer name. So customer name is the attribute one. No other constraint is not required. When exceeded, hard adjust benefit amount. When exceeded, when it is exceeding that, right? when the customer name is exceeding it, what happens? You go there, hard adjust benefit amount is coming automatically also. Right? Or not. So come in. Yes. So only two, uh, what happens? Uh, two of this will be uh, the, in the customer name. Uh, uh, only two sales orders are eligible now. Right? Beyond which it will not be eligible at all. Right? So no more eligibility for the same customer actually. <clears throat> customer, customer name. So yeah, the customer can only book for two orders for which you will be getting a 30% discount actually. So go that minute. So we are now given the list limit section only, only for two customers, two uh, sales orders basically for the customer. Every customer can go for two sales orders. Fine. Close it now. And then close it. We are going to test it now. <clears throat> we'll open up a sales order. Go there. The T02. Fine. Do it. I have no. I'll go to the nine items. <clears throat> so we are given the first item actually. Fine. T02 percentage. F5 is the one. And go there. So go for one quantity and then commit. You'll be getting a 30% discount. Come here. I'm just coming. You can now see a 30% discount has been applied. And go to actions and then go to what view adjustments. So if you go to actions and then go to view adjustments, you can now see that list limit has fired actually. Line number one has got fired for a 30% discount. Right. Adjustment of this. So this can be seen on the modifiers also. I know that. I know that you want. Now go to the query mode. I know that. Is a T02 percentage fine? Lee percentage and then query for it. There's a list limit now. So if you go to the list limits, fine, click on the list limits. So if you click on the list limits, we can see what happens. Consumed is one and then available is one more for this customer actually. In the balances, one is consumed and then one more is available. So you can even go for one more, what happens, a sales order actually. So if you go there, click on it. You click on the transactions and then have a look at it. Fine. Orders, fine. So uh, the price request, the date, and the transaction date, all these things is not showing. <clears throat> fine. Do us. So go there, close it. Now fine. Close it and then minimize it. And then we'll know what happens. Go there and then make one more sales order. So close it. You know, make one more sales order. Sales or second sales order. I'm going to make it. The T02. I'm going to have <clears throat> query for it. Now I click on it. I'm going to go there. The T02 percentage. F5 percentage. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go for four quantities and then give a comment. So now everything is consumed actually. I'm going to actions. I'm going to be in front of Now this customer will not have any more. Uh, this discount is no more available for him. Only for two, two sales orders it is available actually. And this line is so I don't And then we'll now go to this place. Now thank you for it. We'll now go there. Uh, and then go to the window. And then you go to the advanced pricing. And then click on the list limits. Now you can see both of them are consumed actually. So zero is available. Fine, nothing is available. So zero is only available. <clears throat> so close it now. Uh, and then now what happens? We'll now make one more sales order. Fine. So close it and then make another sales order. That for this, what happens? The discount will not be available at all. Can go there. No, no, I have a question. Tell me. This amount which is mentioned, it is for the distinct customer or it is for only one customer or specific it is, it is, customer? It is for the distinct customer only, I think. <laughs> now, I also have a doubt. Fine, let us all make a check of it. It is for the distinct customers only. I think so. We'll now go there. Put this place now. Uh, T02. Uh, percentage. And then fee. And then give a tab. No, fine. I will now go for eight customers. So this time, the order, this will not be applicable at all. No discounts will be available. There is no discount at all. So it's not available. Let us know one thing. We will now create one more customer now. We will now go and get one more customer. You go to the customer standard. So let us now create one more customer and then add, try to what happens. Do this now. We will now see. Thank you. So click on it. So where is the create button? Create button is here. Now click on it. <clears throat> so click on it. So I will now say it's a T02 point underscore cust underscore two now. I'm giving it now. No, address is what? T02 underscore. <laughs> Address two, no, fine. The address two, the address two, and what? 
I will not go on and click on plus note and I will not add a ship to here. If I click on plus, let me add a ship to note. So on the first time when you click on plus, nothing will be happening. So click again on plus, what happens will be happening. Click on, click on plus again. And then what happens will be having it. Okay? So I'll now make it as a ship to one. Ship to one. So this much is sufficient because only AR will be doing a lot of activities on this nothing. So click on save and add details on the right hand side. The right hand side, what was the click on save and add. So we have one built on one ship that is sufficient. Fine, click on save and add details. So we are not doing the saving and adding. <clears throat> it is a cost two actually. <clears throat> Go there. It's not done. Now find the bottom. What happens? You go there. Click on the details. Now click on the details. Just now. So we have an ID also. You go to the business purposes and then move your radio button to ship to, and then click on the details. Actually, click on the details and then provide the five important information. Actually, so I will now go there and I'll say payment terms is what I will now put it two by ten at thirty. That will be defaulting onto the sales orders. So two by ten at thirty. So two by ten at thirty. Fine. So uh, sales person to begin with, what happens is no sales credit. We'll be seeing the sales credit later on. Now. So no sales credit to begin with now. No sales credit. And then the order type is what? TT3 now. TT3 is the one. So over there. So uh, uh, T02, T02, TT3. Right? T02, TT3. And what is so the one now. Right? Price list is what? T02. <clears throat> About only price list one will be coming now. Right? And so the price list two is for the purchasing actually. Price list one. And then go there. And then the warehouse is what? T02 and then child also. So these five are more than sufficient actually. Child also. So go there. So all the five informations have been provided on the ship to business purposes actually. One, two, three, four, five. So click on apply by which what happens? This customer gets created. Now we will now make one sales order for this customer actually. And if it changes, I've been saved now. Close. You will now go to this place and then we'll now create one sales order for this customer. <clears throat> so we'll now create one sales order. So go to the sales orders. <clears throat> so T02 and then give it a no fine. I will now go for the cost two actually. Cust two and then go to the line items. We'll now see whether he gets a discount or not. T02 percentage. We have five percentages and give it a I will now go for seven quantities and give it a and then commit no fine. Let's commit. If he gets it, then what? Yes, he is getting it actually. That means what? It is for every distinct customer actually. <clears throat> Rajesh, clear now? He got the discount. <clears throat> got it. So for every distinct customer, he is getting an offer. I will not go for this. Offer. So that is what it works. Got it. it works. So uh, this one, the list limits, which you have seen now, fine. it is for every distinct customer will have this many sales orders can be done. Beyond which, what I mean, the discount is not available. This is known as a yearly bird discount. Right? But industry will not be using customer specific ones. But they will not use for what? All sales orders put together. All sales orders put together. They will not use this actually and not this actually. So we will now configure this. Okay? So uh, I will not uh, what I mean, put a, or make a change. Okay? I will not. What I mean, okay? Because this is now disabled actually. Okay? For the customer, first customer is disabled. Second customer is still valid. So I will now, what happens? I go there. Let me disable this activity. I will not remove it. None of the first one is uh, irrespective of quantity, the discount is uh, will be applied. Right? It is for every customer, two sales orders. The discount will be applied. Quantity doesn't matter. Quantity means what? Quantity is because I have not given any restriction. Huh? Had I given a restriction on this one, then it will be coming. And this place, what happens? You go there. I have not given any restriction from the quantity now. Item number I have given now. And afterwards, okay. what happens? I have not given any restrictions here at all. No further restrictions. Here. If a modifier does not have any restrictions, it is uh, getting applied everywhere for every quantity actually. I don't give anything. Got it on five orders. <laughs> hey, Gayatri, are you there? Gayatri was absent yesterday also. Today also she's absent. Oh, God. <clears throat> okay. Now, let us go there and then create one more thing at the order level, actually. And control down arrow. And then go there. So, it is a discount. I'm fine, discount. I go there. And then I will not go there. Put it. And is that T02? Fine. I will not say list limit. The LL. And then I will not say two. List limit two. So, go there. Take off of it. So at the order level, I'm going to give it to you. So go to the one now, fine, number one. I'm going to give it now. Fine. The line level discount. The modified type is discount. <laughs> so sometimes what happens, it may be for any item. Fine. There will be any, if I go there, place, I will know. Whether. So I know in the previous case, I've given an item. Fine. Now I'm not going to go it for every item. Fine. So the first 100 customers or first 1,000 customers, whomsoever is buying anything. Fine. I'm not giving any restriction at all. Whatever. To go to the discounts and charges. I will not go there. I will not give a percentage discount. 
I will not say 40 percent risk. Commit. So once when I commit, the list limits are coming up. And list limit will be previously grayed out. And once when you save it, it will be coming. Fine. It is for any items other than any quantity. So I click on list limits. So this time I'm going to use the second one now. And the, so usage, you know, go there for you. There are multiple what happens are distinct are there. And you have to only uh, revenue wise also you can do it. So many uh, what happens are modifications are there. You only have to what happens are make an R and D on this one. <clears throat> across all transactions. You know, the control L. So we have got a current transaction across all transactions. You know, choosing across all transactions. You know, the next is what three quantities are announcing. You know, three, three sales orders. You know, three sales orders of any customer actually. And qualified constraint one is a qualified attribute. Constraint one is a qualifier attribute now, and qualifier attribute. <clears throat> and then uh, context one is order, order level. It is not a customer name, right? it's, a, it's a order level. Uh, and then what is the order date? And then attribute one is what? Requested date. I don't know how exactly this is working now. I control L, no, see, so many things are there. <clears throat> so I, I tested it on a requested date. Man. I'm not exactly remembering about why I've given this now. <laughs> requested date really did not have any real meaning actually. Fine. But uh, that means what? If a requested date is on on that particular requested date, we'll now change the requested data also. And then it's the hard adjustment. I think maybe like on, uh, on a special like on a festival day, if some discount is there, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a festival date, then only for that day, it will be applicable, I think, probably. Maybe, yeah. If it's a Diwali day, first 100 customers on the Diwali day will be getting these discounts afterwards or upon morning. Maybe, maybe. Maybe correct. Okay. You know, it may be a festival day or something like that. So go there. So we'll not test on the requested date also afterwards. I will not give a commit. Conclusive commit. There's no save, no fine. The list limit is no save. We'll not go there. We'll not make a first sales order. Fine. Double comment. We're not going to make a first sales order. The, the previous one is already disabled. And so that will not be applicable at all. You know, that first customer. I go there. <clears throat> so go to the line items and then go there. And then here, what I'm say P02 percentage first item. Go for what is it? Six more days. I'll give a commit. I'll be getting a 40 percent discount. So forty percent discount is applied, and then we we'll now have a look at you know, how much has been consumed. My risk limits will not see. So out of uh, three, one is consumed, two is available actually. Go there. I will now make a second sales order on the second customer actually. My T zero two. I will now put the second customer here. I will now go to the line items. I will now put a different item. T zero two. Firstly, second item. I will now go for nine quantity. We will have less. Okay. So this is twenty dollars. Fine. A okay, forty percent discount will be applied. So twelve dollars. Close it and then have a look at it again. Now I click on it. Now go to the list limits. I click on it. Click on the list limits. Now two is consumed. One is available. Close it now. And again make another sales order on the first one. Now I click on it. So now make another sales order. The T zero two kind of tab. So now make it on another customer. So click on it and then go there. So T zero two percent third third item. <coughs> go for twelve quantities. So it's now ten dollars. My customers commit. We'll be getting a forty percent discount. First. Now, what happens? The list would have got exhausted actually. Thank you on it. Long go there. Click on list limits now. All of them are consumed. Now, find three are consumed. Now, if you go for new one, what happens? It will not be available for the same requested date one. I think so. So, what is sales orders? I will now go for the second customer. Now, find 302. I will now go for the second customers. And then here, what was the date ordered is 1st October. And then if you go to the other tab region, you will now find the requested date. Requested date is not coming now, actually. So what I will do is I will now add one field now. I will not say exempt reason. Let me hide this field. I will now go to the what uh, tools and then hide the field actually. <clears throat> I have kept it over there and then go to the folder and then hide the field. I will now hidden field. The keep it. I will now add the requested date. Now. Go to place. Go to the folder and then add field. <clears throat> show field. So click on show field and then it is requested date now. Or requested date. Okay, now. So it's coming as first of October. It's coming as first of October. So I added the field. So uh, the date ordered and then the requested data are same actually. I go to the line items. So go to the line items. So now what happens if you go there, you will not get any discount at all. Go to the case my twelve quantity and it happened. So if you give it, but we already exhausted. So let us now make a different requested data and then see whether we are getting the discount or not. Thank you. We'll now go to the sales orders. We'll now make a different requested data. Please go to percentage and give it up. Any customer is okay, fine. Go to the other small fine. I will not, oh God, I have not saved this field. I have to save the folder actually. So go to the folder and then hide the field now. <clears throat> I'll now hide the field. And then keep your cursor on this place, fine. Folder and then show the field. <clears throat> I'm now showing the field. I will now say requested date. Fine, requested date is the one. I'm knowing it. So I'll now go to the folder and then save as now, fine. Save as. <clears throat> I will now say uh, 
Nana header. And then I will now open to the public also. I will now open to the default bank account. Okay, now Nana header. So I will just the name of my bonus. So it will be coming up. So whenever I open a sales order, the Nana one folder will be opening up as a default actually. Nana one folder. So the others, what happens? We have the requested date also. So this time, what I do is I will now go there. I will not choose the customer. And then I will not change the requested date. We will not see whether it is already consumed now. Fine. If you go there and check on it, my list limit is already consumed now. So everything is consumed. Fine. It is basically for a requested date. We will not see whether it works or not. Fine. You go to the others. Fine. Go there. I will not give a control L. <clears throat> so I will not choose 2nd October now. 2nd October. I am choosing it now. Go there. Go to the line items and then see now. <clears throat> so it is the T02 percentage. Fine. First item. Go there. Go there. So 10 count is given. And control has commit. It's okay. <clears throat> so for every requested date, it is now allowing three orders actually. Got it now? Fine. If you go to the list limits and then have a look at it, you know, not. so a second line has got created actually. So, got this point, but... so if you go to the transactions, it is basically on the requested date. You know, so requested date is the first of October. We have consumed all the three, and then for second of October, we have consumed only one. So if you give requested date, it may be a Diwali day or a New Year day for which order was only hundred orders. It may be irrespective of any customers actually. And you got a lot of variance to it. And my insurance told me that they have done a lot of R&D on this, no fine. <laughs> yeah, because the end client will be having so much of a requirements on this yearly bird offering. Fine. It's called yearly bird <coughs> discount. <coughs> so you can even work on it. <coughs> if a customer order four quantity and a one time, then uh, how do the... There is no quantity limitations at all. Any quantity is okay. <laughs> it doesn't have any quantity limitations. It is only number of orders actually. <clears throat> On a particular requested date, only maximum is three years old. It may be a Diwali day, it may be a, what happens, a New Year day, something like that. And you can even try different, different values now, fine? In this place, what happens, sir? You can go and then try different, different values actually. So click on it. So you go there, go to the, what happens, list limits now, not list limits, sorry. Go there. In this place, uh, Oh, yeah, list limits now. There you can configure on different different ones. And then instead of the requested date and drop it down, <laughs> it's not allowing you to edit at all. So there you can try multiple attributes are also there, not only one. So we have constraint one, context one, attribute one. You change all these things and then see how best it is working actually. They're all for lab exercises. You got an idea. Now what happens? Make the constraints one, context one, attribute one. And then make a change, and then here we have only hot adjusters also there. You know, I so there also what happens? Uh, you can even try different different attribute two is there, context two is there, plenty of things are there actually. It's again a big subject, and then uh, my students have done wonders. They told me, sir, you done a lot now in this one. <laughs> so only what happens? Only when you do it, you will understand it. So this completes the list limits. Have you understood it? any questions on this now? Good. No, no. Second attribute is mandatory or uh, only I don't one? Know. <laughs> <laughs> attribute one, attribute two, fine. Attribute one is there. Attribute two, I have not given anything at all. I mean, it's not mandatory actually. Attribute only I have given. Again, make an attempt. Make different different attempts and then see about how it's behaving actually. How much is getting the balances you can very well see this. Nothing. Attribute two is not mandatory. So naturally it is allowing you, no? It's not mandatory actually. It's again a big subject, and then uh, we can do wonders on this one. Well, my students told that, sir, you're not only one, <laughs> you've done a lot on this one. <laughs> That's what they used to say. So we complete the list adjustments. Any questions on this now? <clears throat> Good. Now go to the next topic. I will not inactivate it. I will not inactivate it. The next one is also a big one. And then uh, that is called attribute management. Actually, the next one is called attribute management, and that is also used extensively in some industries, you know, fine? like glass industries. And then uh, we, I was working in a steel company where what happens? The metallurgical coke is a costliest element actually. They we used to import from Australia, and then uh, there are around uh, around uh, ten factors there, based upon which the price will be decided actually. Really, ten factors. So with those ten factors of multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Finally, the price will be derived actually because that is the costliest element, costliest raw material in the manufacturing of steel actually. So we have got 10 such elements by which what about the price of coke will be designed. The, what about the, the viscosity, the permeability, or the, uh, the density. There are so many such factors now. We cannot even understand certain, certain field at all. 
and then the moisture moisture content so everything put together a formula is uh, basically derived in the piece and then based upon that formula the price will be done <clears throat> even in glass industry what happens when you want to go and then buy a glass you know say how much of length of glass you want to buy and then what is the width of the glass and then what is the thickness of the glass so it is basically the volume right length into breadth into thickness will be the volume so you will be paying by volume and not by any other means actually so we have to say oh, what is the total value and then every piece what is your length what is your breadth and then what is your what happens uh, thickness actually <clears throat> And Oracle University has given one example. So that example I'm going to do it now. Fine. This is the example of the Oracle University actually. So we are going to see the pricing attribute management. Pricing attribute management is the one which you're going to see now. So we are a second hand car selling company. The second hand car company selling company. The formula for the price of the car is what? Second hand price is what? A constant price of 5,000 divided by car age multiplied by car model actually. So this is how the price is derived. So you may even have 10 to 15 such uh, what happens uh, components of a uh, what happens uh, price. If the number of components are more, it will be very complex and then what happens you have to do it very properly. Actually. So this is a very simple example with only what happens the uh, three factors basically on the car price. Actually. So car age can be at a maximum of only five years. No? And beyond which what happens uh, uh, they will not give you uh, one kilo of apple if you give a car. No? <laughs> so uh, it is basically worthless actually the car. So it is, it is one restriction of this. Nothing like that. And there are three core models are available here. One is a standard model, one is a deluxe model, and then one is the AD model. And the factor is what? One and one point five and two. So whenever you put a car model as what deluxe, it will be the car price will be doubled uh, around one point five times. And then if you put the car model as AC, the car price will be two times. Actually. The price of the car will be two times. Actually, is what so this is one basic thing. And then we are going to see about how to do the implementation. Right? This is how Oracle's, uh, what happens, your uh, user guide is written actually. So I've taken it away from that place. And, then, then. <clears throat> and reading the user guides and all is very, very difficult because it will not run into thousands of pages actually. Right? You must have the patience to sit and then read these guides actually. It may be giving you a lot of information, but very, very difficult to what happens to sit and then watch it now. Right? Everything is there. All of things are there, but uh, they are not in an orderly fashion. That is the biggest problem. They won't be in a presentable format. Right? So, so many information they will not provide. You only have to go and then grab those things and then do it. So, we are going to do it. So, first of all, we are going to create two value, value sets. <clears throat> so, we will not take away. So, I will not use the 0, 1, 5. Here, the example is not using 0, 1. So, let me use the 0, 1. Itself. So, take copy. I will not create a value set actually. Go to the system. I will not go to the system admin now. I will not go to the system administrator. <clears throat> We will now go to the application and go to the validation and then go to the set. This is the navigation. So application validation set is the navigation in sysadmin now, system administrator. Fine. Double click on it. So I will now paste this one. So the one more give it a So it is a car age value set one actually. Description also I'm pasting it actually. I'm pasting the value set. You know, go there click on it. So is what format type is number actually. Format type is number. Go there. I will now make it as a number. Number is the format type. Go back one. And then go there. Maximum size is three. Fine. That means what? Three digits including the decimal actually. Maximum size is three. There must. And then the precision is one. That means what? The decimal point is one. Actually. The decimal point is one. So that means what? Uh, nine point nine is a maximum actually. Fine. Because including the precision, what happens? There is only three digits. Fine. Nine point nine can be the maximum value of the number actually. So nine point nine. So three digits and then. One means what uh, can can be nine point nine when that is about the three digits, and then the maximum minimum value is one one only one uh, year old is only minimum and then maximum is five. Right? So if a car is less than one one year, then we will not sell it actually. Fine, go back to five point zero. And then here the validation type is none. That means what it can be done freehand actually. Anything anything between one point zero to five point zero, you can very well write. Fine, there is no validation at all. Yeah. So the car age is basically having a validation type of none actually. Controllers commit. It is not a the transaction complete is complete. <coughs> no go there and then create the next one, next value set. <coughs> Control down arrow. <coughs> we will not take up this one. It's a core option. Fine, take off it. Core option of the value set. I'm going to paste it over here now. Fine. Like, on. Click on the description and paste it over here. <coughs> <coughs> here it is a character. Is a character and then maximum character size is what 10 now. Yeah. And then this is going to be independent. Independent means what? You'll be having a list of values actually. 
value set one is a none actually, and then value set two is independent. That means what? We'll have a list of values. Actually. Give us say. That's it. Give us commit. So both the value sets are clear. We can see upon commit, the transaction complete is coming in the bottom actually. Both the value sets are now created. So close it now, fine. Works. So both the value sets are clear. Now we go there. For step number two, fine. Step number one is complete. We'll now go to the step number two. Now I will now go to the application validation values. This is the navigation. Application validation values and navigation where we are going to give the values for what? Only for the core option. My core option is one of the character. It has got three, one standard deluxe and easy. So we'll not get. Whereas for the none, we cannot give anything. Right? The, the validation type is none. We can write in free form any value between 1.0 to 5.0. So the precision is three. It is always giving you one decimal section right? within which what happens, you can very well do it. So it will not have any values at all to the none. Only the independent and dependent will be having values actually. If a value set is, is having a validation type as independent or dependent, then only they will be having a value set. Go so go to the place and then you know, go to the validation and like model. So application validation values double click model. So here, if I put what I mean, 0, 1 and then give a tab, only one will be coming. I'm oh, sorry, not coming. A uh, value set name like that. Uh, we are given 0, 1, isn't it fine? I will not say 0, 1 percentage and then give a tab. And give a tab. Oh, this is also not coming. Drop it down. It is by value set. List of values contain no entries at all. How come? We have now created the values. No value set. No. The value set has been created. Why the value is not coming? Go there. Fine. Close it. Again, go to the validation sets. No fine. No go there. Query for the zero one percentage and then query for it. No fine. The core age value set is there. No fine. Go there. So type is list of values. Security is security type is about no security value. There is only no security value. There is no security at all for this one. Numbers find for that with none. And then you go there. And then down arrow. So car option value set find is independent. Maximum character is 10 no. List of values in the numbers. So both are coming. Zero, one. It has to show me both the values. So close it now. Find them. So I'll know what the values are might take on it. And then control F11 will not try to retrieve it now. I'm not coming at all. Uh, role has to be assigned on some role uh, is there. What some is role, role, uh, there is a user role uh, to view the value sets. But I'm in sysadmin actually. Oh, you're in sysadmin? Okay. So there is no role required at all. Uh, are you getting any list of values at all? In the... Nothing is coming. Back. I will not exit uh, all and come back now. No exit now. So those place mm. operations on that. Welcome one two three. More the papers invoice. I mean, switch responsibility system within which we are doing. Then go to the application, and validation, and then go to the values. Okay. Zero one percentage, and then you have tap. Value set is not coming. Drop it down. Find values by value set only. So we have to add the value actually. Fine. And there only what happens? They have to give the value. And even in value. So first of all, the value set has to come now. I click on find. You won't get anything at all. Close it now. So here I will now make a query on this one. Go to the query mode. Find the value set. The name is what? Zero one percentage, and then let me query. Now click on query. Nothing is coming actually. <clears throat> it is not for this thing. I want to keep the screen description. Ah, your code is exit actually. So, uh, do you have, do you know any other uh, responsibility which is having these values actually? Let me do one thing. I will not add it to my responsibility if I don't go to the values moment. I will not bring it to the top 10 list. Fine. It's called flux field values now. Oh God, we have to use for flux field values. Fine. Double click on it. So, flux field, key flux field. I don't go to the key flux field. The flux field values, no, fine. Is it a key flux field? Application is what? Oh, that. Title zero one, I don't want that. 
structure is also 0, 1, 3, 1, and 1, segment is 0, 1, 3, 1, 0, 1, it is not working. So maybe that, what happens if I will now make T, 0, 2, and then we now go to the set now. I will now say it is a T, 0, 2, fine. Or let's go option, fine. Or option, the value set to so I'm now making a T02 as a prefix, actually, not starting not on the number, actually. I'm going to paste it over here, find the character. I'm going to make it about 10 characters. independent actually. So T02 core option value set 2 is a one fine. that until it's coming. So transaction is complete. I'm going to close it now. We'll now go to the values. And then put T02 percentage and then give a tab. Now fine. It's still not coming. Invalid value for the flux field value set name, actually. Value set name. Is what is saying. Yeah, the role has to be assigned. Uh, uh, role, role is not. Yeah. What is the role? Is a, a responsibility? Uh, we call them as a responsibility. Uh, a user can you just user management? Uh, huh? go, to user, go to user management and check for the user uh, if any role restriction. User management. User management. And there is no such responsibility at all. <laughs> uh, Nana, if. Do you have access to uh, backend like running a SQL script? Which one? Post script. SQL, SQL. Yes, SQL, I don't have an access actually. I will do one thing. Uh, application, I go to the validation, then go to the values. So let me add this, what happens? Uh, this one into my responsibility actually. So it is so it is already there now. It's a flux field value zone. Right? Flux field value is the name of the uh, what happens, uh, function actually. So go there. And then I will now add it to my menu actually. So I will now go to the application menu. <clears throat> Fine. My menu name is what? OM concurrent program. OM. And then uh, OM uh, ADS. ADS OM. Sorry. It is ADS percentage. Fine. OM percentage. Fine. Super percentage. Query for it. Number ADS. ADS OM super menu. So let me add that flux field values OM. I will now add in the beginning. I will now go there. Control down arrow. I will now put as 11 now. Fine. Go there. And then the sub menu, the function, I will not put it, right? It is basically flux field values, isn't it, fine? Uh, Radhika? Flux field values, my the one. So let me add it. So we have now added the flux field values directly over here. On the, in the radius one. It is after order is in return, it's coming, fine, control is coming. Not enough, not. We'll not go there, we'll not see. So we will not try to, what happens, uh, insert the values over here, actually. Flux field value is the one. So let it then compile it, actually. Flux field values. <clears throat> so once in this compile, we will now go to our responsibility and then try to, what happens, uh, uh, add the values. <clears throat> Okay. Yes, Prakash. Please mute. No, fine. If you're not talking to me, uh, tomorrow. So it is now complete. And now I'm going to close it. No, I'll not go there. So I'll not close it. And then we'll not switch responsibility to T02. So here we'll be having the second one itself as what? Uh, the values actually and orders and returns. Where is the flux field? Values has to come up and not coming here at all. Here you do this Let us now go to the order management super user. Order management super user. And then here we had to have some orders and returns that you see in the final. Flux field value has to come up. Not coming at all. Control L. I will not say values. Yeah. Validation templates is only coming. It's not getting added also. God. Not getting added. Even though I have given ADS OM super, you know, there's no getting error at all. Below orders and returns, the values is not coming as a function at all. Control L, it is known as what value. Or whether it's, I don't say flux percentage, and then see, you know, flux field, flux percentage, value percentage. Descriptive flux field, flux field, it's Flex field values is there. Find that. Let me open up. Find flex field values. So we are now opening up another flex field values. Now <clears throat> there are so many flex field values. Seems here that are there. And we are trying to open it up. 
you're not even opening. Oh God. <laughs> One insisted me to opening actually, and then that too also it is not allowing me to what happens add anything at all. What can be the reason? You'll have to add the role, Nana, from user management. One second, I don't know. Say T02 percentage this come up and give a tap. Oh God, you have to add a role. No, you're saying yeah, you I think have... from 12.2 to uh, 12.2 to there, there is a new concept. I think we need to add this uh, security ah. role. Is it so? Okay, please. system administrator. So, what I have to do? If I have to add a responsibility first of all for user management. Yes. Security. Go to the user and then go to the define. Now, fine. I am now query the operations user. So, I am now querying the operations user. <sighs> operations and then control down arrow. Fine. I will now say user management. User percentage. N N percentage. Name your app. Now, fine. User management. I am now adding it. Now, fine. So, close it and then let us now switch responsibility to user management. It will be a web enabled form, I think. Yeah, it will be enabled form. So here I will now go to the user of what? Operations. Operations. And then I give a go now. Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a responsibility name, sorry. It's a responsibility name. So I will now say what happens. Uh, uh sister, fine. No, actually, it's a different screen. Let me just check because uh, it should have different tabs. One of them says role. Uh -huh. One second, let me go to a responsibility, fine? Yes, sure, sure. Ready, M-I-N-I-S-E-R-E-A. Administrator, fine, take a look at System administrator is coming, fine. I'll open up the system administrator. So once when I open the system administrator, I've got uh, two things to do. So menu exclusions is there, and then external items, and then secured attributes. So you've got to know why. So shall I secure it, and then do it now, fine? Check on the secured attributes. Is asking me to what I want to secure it. Secure it should show roles. For some reason, you're not seeing roles here. Right? Honest, just go to functional administrator or functional developer responsibility. Functional administrator, you want to go. No? I, mean, yeah. I will now close it. Then come over. Yeah, here. I think that's the right one. Functional. Functional, functional administrator, I'm going over there. So I'm now going to see the grants which has been given on the point. I will have to get a grant on it. Or shall I give a grant? No, fine. Click on it. Security. I will not click on create grant. I will not get a grant actually. So I will not say T02 grant one now. So take a copy of it and put the description. That's it. <clears throat> Effective date is there. Grant type is all users. No, fine. Operating unit is what? Uh, operating unit is what? Vision operations from B percentage OTE. Responsibility, I will not say uh, order management. Huh? Yeah. I think Alta yeah. pasted the uh, correct uh, uh, description. Huh? Uh, no, no. Alta actually pasted in the chat. We'll have to log in as a sysadmin user, actually. Oh, ho, ho. We yeah. Login as a sysadmin user, no fine. Right, right. So and then that? assign the role. Yeah. Okay. For, for it, so flux field value sets do not appear in the list of values, fine, my daughters, uh, on segment value, fine. So what do you have to do, fine? Uh, yeah, the, the, this option works, you can try this. The object you can give flex field security in the data security. One second. Cancel. Cancel this, no, fine, like, no, cancel this. And then uh, here, responsibility is what? Order percentage, fine. It is a super percentage. Order management, super user, vision operations, fine. This percentage, you know that. Order management, super user, vision operations, user, you want. And data security, fine, you know that. So I have to add flex field value set security object will be there. There will be an object called flex field value set security. Yeah. F L E X flex. And then we will go now. So many things are there. Flex field read only, read only, read only. Flex field value set security object. Yeah. This one, huh? Yeah. Can I put this one? Yeah, the last one. Yeah. I will now select it. No, I can select it. No, no, no. So for the order management super user operations, I've added the flex field value set security now. Got it now? Yeah. So click on next now, fine. So click on it. I now added one data security action. I click on next. Now coming over there, fine. All rows, fine. Click on next now. So click on it. So data security is coming. So click on next now. <clears throat> the form validation value must be entered for set actually. Set is what you go there. I mean, I click on go now. 
search for flex values uh, flex okay again okay. we'll values search for what happens you google that flex field only no mind f l e x click on go now so again the same thing now insert update set uh which one i have to choose now yeah the highlighted one the flex field value set security insert or update oh, set oh insert set na fine insert set below one below one na flex field value set insert or update set okay man no and go there so we'll now choose is now my click on select actually yeah. so click on next actually click on next we go on and review and then finish now so click on finish so we are now done this for our order management responsibility actually we'll now go there and then see now i got Go to the place. So no, we go on and go to this placement. So it's responsibility to order management. Order management. So I will now go there. Control L. So it's basically flex F L E X percentage point V A L percentage. So it's the flex field value sets. Okay. Oh, not the value sets. Values basically in Control L. I will now say flex percentage point V A L U. Percentage variant in a fine way. Remove for no values, but for values actually. First for values. Flex field values. Thank you. Okay. Over there. Hey, Murga. And then give a tab. No fine. But we got it. Fantastic. <laughs> so we have to give a grant actually. Fine. Who is the other guy who has told something else now? What do you say? He has to log in as a sysadmin. And then uh, what I have to do now? User management uh, will be there. User the management. A role has to be added. Huh? Role. Yeah. There is a all value set role, uh, and there is a script also, a small script you can run if you have database access, like a SQL developer. Um, that's the easiest <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, but if you don't know technical, no fine. Okay. Anyhow, some or other, this has worked out. No fine. Deepthi, thank you. And then uh, who else has recommended this? No fine. Good. Who was giving me these answers? No fine. On the flex field, who is this? Who gave me the answers? No, actually, to select sort of zones of set and all, update. And who is that person? Please uh, raise your voice. You know, see who has given because the amount. Noted down the person's name actually. Please, please open your mic and then speak now. <laughs> He's feeling shy now. Or oh, Chandra. Chandra, you gave it? You give the values? Yeah, yes, no, no, very good, very good, very good. Chandra has given it. So go there. And then we are now added a grant actually. And then because of which whatever we are able to see from the order management now. Thank you. Don't find me. It's a learning actually. Thank you. The learning process. Go to this place. So we are now going to give three values actually. Go there. So go there. So three values are standard deluxe and exit easy. You have a value set one given. So that it's a standard. Click on it. STD. Fine. Down. And then DLX. And down. And then EAC. So three values have been added. Fine. Click on commit. It goes down. So we added. So transaction is complete. So only for the core option, we can give a value. For a core, what happens? Age, it is having value set none. So it will not be coming at all. That is why what happens if you go there. So a concurrent request is now computer uh, is now going for compilation of the values now. Thank you. So I don't know where exactly the flexible values are, but there are so many places it is there actually. So the flexible values are available in some place. If you give a control L and then go for flux now, fine. Go there. If it is a FL EX percentage, fine. V A L percentage. You see, even the value set values is there. so many places it is there now. Fine. And then value sets and then value set values are available in so many places basically. <laughs> Flex field values there. Everything is available in so many places. I don't know how, how come we have to open up the navigation and see it. It's all, it's all done. So this step is now complete. Step number two is complete. Now we have to go to the attribute management actually. It is basically under navigation, what happens? It will now go to the attribute management. It will now go to the attribute management. So go there. So go to the setup. It will now go to the attribute management under the pricing responsibility. You know, open up the pricing and go there. So we'll now go to the attribute management. Go down. So we are going to go to the attribute management. <clears throat> Where is that here? Uh, set up. There below this one. I'm set up. Yes, attribute management. So set up attribute management. So navigation is what? Set up attribute management and then context and attributes. So go there. Set up attribute management and then open up and then go to the context and attributes. So, so this is the one. <clears throat> so, uh, navigation is what pricing responsibility set up attribute management and then context and attributes of navigation. When double click on it. So here we are going to give this one. So set up attribute management and context management. 
and then we're going to present another responsibility. So I will now create a car context actually. I will now go on and get a car context. So go there. So uh, the context, fine, go there. Uh, and it's not even pricing manager responsibility for type pricing context. Fine, type is a pricing context. Fine, go there. So drop down the type is a pricing context. The pricing context. Fine, go there. So the code is what I'm not going to get a code as what zero one car context. That is the code I'm creating in my fine, go there. So I will not put on this place. Fine, go there. So extra spaces I will not delete now. Fine, take all of it. Fine, go there. The name is also the same thing. The code name and the meaning description, everything is the same actually. So for the pricing context, I am now getting a car context actually. The context is now getting created actually. And then car age. And then it will be having what? And then add car age and car options as attributes. So this is the context and then I am going to add the attributes actually. So here what I mean, I will not take a copy of the car age. And so car age, the one, I can take over it. And then go there. I will not add the code now. As a car age, so click on it. The name is also car age, the description is also car age, and then normally what happens, we will be giving a precedence of what 220 actually, and 220 is the normal precedence actually. And what else? I've not written it here actually. Fine, the precedence is 220. It is what's called advanced pricing. Fine, go for the So the columns mapped, fine, click on it. So columns mapped to the one, fine, and anything, and then add it with the responsibility. With the responsible uh, with the respective validation sets actually fine. validation sets I will do in the fine so we have to give the validation sets fine. Uh, I will have to give the one of the advanced pricing <clears throat> go there where is the value set I had given now a value set is here so click on it the value set is what t02 fine give it have no fine for the car age fine we don't have anything on the t02 actually fine so car options only coming so I will now put zero one and then give it have zero one has got car age I will now choose the 01 car age. And then here, columns map to click on it. And then here, on the view, control L. You we'll see, ah, pricing and attribute one actually. No, I, no, no, I think you, you have to give user entered. Uh, the, because, no, no, uh, no, no, not user entered. I will be coming to you. User entered, I will not be where I can build. Not in this place. So, okay. so here, it is not user entered. It is attribute one. So this is the one. I have not written it in, properly in this place, actually. Not in, you know, that, not in. So in this place, we have to give like this. Right. The pricing attribute one, and then it is advanced pricing, and then go further. <clears throat> and then in this place, what happened? The value set name is giving. Mm -hmm. Now go for the second one. Now, fine. the second one is what I will now say is a zero one core option. No, fine. So, zero one core option. <clears throat> Take over it. So, I will now paste it on this place. No, fine. Zero one core option. Click on it. The name is also same, and then the description is also same. No, and then the precedence is what 220. No, so, click on it. No, fine. Go there. Not an advanced pricing, and then here it is the pricing attribute number two. Now, fine, it must be successive so that what happens the retrieval will be fast actually. Do not give uh, one afterwards spy and all successive attributes here. Use no, I will not go there. Here is the T02. T02 is the one, this is the value system. So, we are now giving the, is the core option, and then there is a zero one in the core age, and then now we commit it. So, the context and attributes are created actually. Conclusive. So you may even have 10 such things or maybe even very huge actually. So whatever is like. Now what happens is go to the pricing attribute management attribute, you know, and then with the respective validation sets actually. You know, no. So close it now, fine bonus. You close it. So the attribute, the context and attribute is now created actually. You now close it. Next is what? We have to go on and link it now. We are going to link it now. It's called attribute linking and mapping. You know Set up attribute management, attribute linking and mapping. Fine, bonus. So I will now go to the navigation fine. on the advanced pricing, on the, the pricing manager responsibility, set up attribute management, attribute linking and mapping. Fine. Double click on it. Double click on it. Go there. So the pricing entity is what? Drop down. You will have plenty of entities here. What happens? I will now go for order fulfillment action. No go there. So here, the for the PT of order fulfillment, I have to do it. So I want to do the order fulfillment. It is the pricing transaction. It is what? Order fulfillment. If you are using it for purchasing, I have to use the purchasing actually. And then the context type is what? I will now go there. We have to give the context type also. And then the context type is what? Pricing context actually. Yeah. So we can even use it for multiple things actually. If you drop down, we can use it for what? Even the qualifier context also. And the product context also. So pricing context we are giving it. So go there. So once when you give it, yours will be coming. Zero one will be coming over here. You just see on the left hand side, it will be coming automatically in this place. Go there. It's now coming. Zero one core context is coming. But it is not assigned to any PT at all. So this is not assigned to any PT. So we have to assign it to the pricing transaction entity. We cannot put tick mark here automatically. We cannot do it. Fine. So once when you make a query on this now, fine, 
on your PTE as well as the context type. It is now giving you the list of ones and then the car context which has been made. So we have the context and attributes created, but it is not at linked or assigned to a PTE actual. It is not a serial one, it is enabled actual. Very good. Now, what happens is I choose the car context and then click on the link attribute. I'm going to link it to. So we are going to perform a link actually. So go there. So click on the link attributes. So once when you link it, the tick mark will be coming automatically on the left hand side. So click on the link attributes. So click on the link attributes. Go there. So here, what happens? The code is what car age. First is code of car age. Man, drop down and then choose the car age. And the car age you're choosing it. So the level. So level is what both. So we can even trace the what I was both at the level, fine. Both at the line level as the order level, fine. Both line and order level, let us say both, fine. Level of both. And then here, attribute mapping method, fine. The att attribute mapping method is user entered. Fine. So we can even do it, fine, on the custom sourced or runtime sourced or user entered. So for the user entered, attribute sourced while pricing the order. When you're pricing it at the name, what I mean, the attribute will be sourced, actually. User entered the one. And then love is enabled, fine. And then go there. I will not choose the next one. My next one is not core option. And here also it is the same now. Right? Shift F5 and then go there to the shift F5. So by which the linking is now taking place. If you commit it automatically, what happens there? for every entry, every line, there will be two two concurrence which will be running now. Two two concurrence, right? So control S commit. Now what happens there? there will be two two concurrence which will be running. You will be finding that two concurrence. And then this concurrent is failing. I don't know why it's so, but, but it is working for me. I found that this concurrent, one of the concurrent, well, the four concurrence will run now, and then two of them are failing actually. I don't know why it's failing. If you go to the view output now, fine. So it says so many things now. Fine. View has failed to check log file. All this thing is now saying now. I'm unable to understand this as it is now. But I found that it is working actually. It's working. I know us. So let us now leave it now. Fine. Go there. If you go there and then in the blue one, fine. Your view log. Oh God, such a big <laughs> one now. <laughs> I don't know where to go on and see this now, fine. Somewhere, but it is working for me as far as pricing is concerned now. But it's giving some error somewhere. Something is wrong actually. I tested in every uh, training. What happens? It always happens like this. So once when the linking is complete, what happens? You now see a tick mark on this one. So click on close now. Fine. You now find a tick mark coming up on the A tick mark. So this tick mark indicates what your attribute. Fine. Your uh, what happens? The pricing context and attributes are linked actually. Linked to the PD. Fine. Not linked to the PD. No, it's not a serial one, but it's any one actually. So linking of what happens your PTE, fine, your context and attributes to the PTE is not done actually. Linking of that, what happens is not done. Fine. Now we will now go on then create our formula actually. We're going to get a formula. <clears throat> you know, go on and get a formula. So what is this place? Fine. I will now go to the place. I will now collapse all. Go to the place. Let us now create a formula. Pricing formula and then formula set up as a navigation. So pricing formulas, formula setup, I'm now going to get a, what happens a formula now, fine. Double click on it, you'll not get a formula. So I will now say it's a, it's a zero one, fine, car formula. <clears throat> car formula one. So I am now getting a formula, take off it, and then go to the description. So it is going to have three lines actually, fine. It is what's called what the formula will be having this. <laughs> so one divided by two, multiplied by three actually, fine. I will now say one, Divided by two and then star three. So this is the formula. So the first line is basically a numeric constant of 5000 actually. The first line is new. So go that on it. And then you, this is a new formula. And then we have to build it actually. This is what I'm saying. Fine. We are going to build it. So once when you save it, I will now build it now. So only when you build it, it will be effective actually. And then whenever you make any changes in the formula, also you have to build it actually. Any changes in the formula or any of the components or any steps, anything you are making a change, you have to build it again. So it's now giving you a warning of it doesn't matter. Click on it. So go there. Control L. I will now choose the numeric constant. I will now go to the what's called uh, numeric constant. So the component value is five thousand, and then that is step number one now. Step number one is what? What is the next one? Now go to the placement. Next one is what? Pricing attribute. Now. What is the pricing attribute? So whichever uh, whichever is having a value set with the null will be coming on the pricing attribute actually. Fine. Go there. So whichever is having an attribute as null, fine. Go to the pricing attribute. Whichever is having a value set as null, that will be coming over here. Pricing attribute. And then here, what happens? I will now say 0, 1 car context. Right? Go there, 0, 1. 0, 1 has got 2. Only whichever is having null only will be coming. The car age, what happens? The car context is coming. Right? I'm sorry. The pricing attribute will now come only for the thing which is having list of values actually. It is independent or dependent. Right? The none will not come at all. Which is having what? Independent, dependent. So the null will not come. 
so uh, which is having independent event that only will come in and then the pricing attribute i'm sorry okay okay i'm making, making a mistake actually it's only car context actually so car age only will come on so car age car options that means zero one car age only will come car option will not come at all and the original statement is correct actually so this is having what a none as a value type so the value type is none on the value set so that only will come the other one will not come so click on it and go there the car conduct car age is coming in the sixth one the next one is what factor list the third one is a factor list fine control l we'll not choose the factor list try different different ones and then what happens to do it now fine goes the factor list is what now here we are going to create a factor list so it is not going to come from the list of values i will not say 0 1 underscore factor list underscore one so by writing it what happens we are creating it actually so it is not coming from the list of values we are now creating it remember give it a so upon giving it what happens it will be created it will be created so a new factor list will be created continue Fine. A new factor list is now getting created. Right, zero one factor list one is now getting created. Fine, okay, okay, okay. And the list of three now. So the list of three. And then here we are going to give the factors actually. The factors. Fine. Right? Keep the cursor on the factor list and then click on the factor list actually. Keep your cursor on the factor list. And then click on the factors now. This is the factor list. And click on factors. I am now going to give the factors. So in the top, what happens? I am going to give a so zero one car context now. I will say is what zero one. And then give it. There is only one context now. Next is what car option. Car option. So zero one. And then give it. I am not fine. Car option. I am going to choose. Not the age actually. Car option. So operator is equal to. Or it will be equal to. And then here I will not see the three values will be coming. Fine. So control H. I will not come over here. Think you have to you have to choose T T zero two right. Car option. T zero two car option. You select. You have created that. Oh ho ho ho! I created a three T zero two. No, I am okay. Very good. Very good. So I made a mistake. Who is this? <laughs> I have not seen the name. Now. So T zero two I made it. Okay, is it correct? No, and T zero two is the car option. Oh God, no, no. Here the name is seven. Only the value set is T zero two. Correct. Only the value set is T zero two. But the uh, everywhere else it is only zero one actually. Only the value set is T zero two. In total is fine. Okay. So give yes, no fine. I will not put what standard. <clears throat> standard. So adjustment factor. No go there. So adjustment factor is one. Fine. When you use one, that just not as one. Fine, down arrow. So that is now created. So shift F5. Go there. Click on it. And this is also shift F5. Go there. So this is also shift F5. Go there. And then control S. If it is going to be deluxe, now choose the deluxe. Fine. Deluxe means what? It is 1.5. 1.5 is the one. Fine, down arrow. Shift F5. Go there. It is a shift F5. Shift F5. Go there. It is a AC. No, fine. Control S. Now choose the AC. <clears throat> Using the one, what kind of? It is going to be two. Fine, come on. So the factors have been given now. We are now given the factors. Fine. So car context, car option, fine. Car age do not have any option, fine. Only for the car option they have value. Fine. So click on okay, now fine. This is the factor list structure. So factor list is applicable only for independent and dependent value sets. So click on. Whereas pricing attribute is for what value set is none actually. I think is having only value set that will be having a pricing attribute is applicable only for the value sets which are having none actually. That is factor list is applicable only for this. This is having values as independent or dependent, and then we are given these many values. Control S come. So come it. There are no changes. So it is already done. So after having created it, what happens? We have to build it actually. You go to the tools and then go to build. So every time, whenever you make a change, also you have to build. Now. Whenever you make a change, you have to build it. Now. And first time also you have to do it. Tools build. So what happens? They concurrently be running for building it actually. So once when the build is complete, it will now say the building is complete. Actually, the build is complete. So the build formula package has been generated successfully. Thank you, Kamal. So attributes and then context and attributes we created. Afterwards, we link with the context and attributes to a pricing transaction entity of order fulfillment, and then afterwards we create the formula. So one by one we are doing it. So we are doing it. Now we are now creating an item called second car. So click on it. Uh, oh God! I have done everything on order management. Actually, fine. I should have done it on my responsibility. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine. Okay. Inventory. Go there. Go there. Inventory. Go to items and then go to master items. Master items. And then go for M1 or <coughs> M1 or I am going for now. Go to this place. Okay. I will now say T02. Fine. Okay. The second car. So take off it and then put the description. Okay. I'm putting the description. I will not go on the apply the template. No, fine. The purchased item template is not getting applied. Click on apply. Click on the no. And then control S commit. Fine, go there. Go there. 
So Vision is now using a corporate pricing list. I will go that to owner. So it's now assigned to my what happens, my child or what? Alt T and then go. And I have to assign it to my child or even what? So I have now assigned to my child or. So if you see the vision now, fine. If you go to the sales orders, and then if you put a customer, let's say eleven forty three is a customer. The customer number is eleven forty three. Eleven forty three, and then give it up. So we have a corporate price list. So let us now add the price of this second car right, into the corporate price list. So I will not discard it. <coughs> let us go there. So we will not. What happens? We will not go there. We want it. So populate. What happens? The created up. Populate the formula in the static formula. Fine. We will always call it static formula. So we are going to populate the thing. What happens with no way? Man, we'll not go on and go to the prices. No, thank you. So go to the purchasing and then go to the advanced pricing. Advanced pricing. And then you go to the price list and then go to the price list. Oh, and the thing is there, fine. There is no everything is filled up with all the 10 of no, The top 10 is done. You know what? Yeah, sometimes I'm going to take a look. I'll put it. 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 Go there. I will not query this. No, Corp percentage and then let me query it. No. You're going to query it. So let us now insert this. No, fine. Go there. Control down. You're not going to insert it. Fine. With the item number. Fine. Shift F5. Go there. With the item number. Shift F5. Go there. Go there. The T02 percentage and then give it a fine. You've got whatever the second car. Second car is coming. Yes. Go there. Go there. You know, go for that. No, fine. Take on. Go for that. So here, I will not give a unit price. No, fine. I will not give a unit price. No, fine. Go there. Go there. Not give a unit price. But what happens? I will not give a or happens a static formula. So if you're giving a static formula, whenever any component is changed, it will not be built at all. Whereas if you give the formula in the dynamic area, fine, whenever the pricing even takes place, it will automatically build and then it will not price it actually. The zero one, the zero one percentage, and then give a backup to the car formula. So one when the formula is given, what happens? The pricing, the value will not be required. Dynamic formula will now build it on every pricing event actually. But that will be a very heavy one because sometimes what happens, there will be too many formulas there and then it will be running a lot of concurrence. And so you run the build on any change on the formula and then put it on a static. And so that what happens, your pricing engine will be fast actually. Otherwise, if you feel that the formula is going to change in a very random manner, then what happens, you can put it on dynamic. So ensure that building takes place actually. That's it. So we are now given the pricing formula and we are not given any value at all. Let us now open up a sales order and see about how this is now coming. Now open up a sales order. Open up a sales order. So the uh, what about the customer number is eleven forty three. Right? It is AC networks actually. Fine. Go to the nine items. Now we go to the nine items. I will now put T zero two percentage. And then the second car I am going to put it. Go there. If you give one quantity and then give a tap. Fine. Go there. Second car is coming. Go there. 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 The second and third is not having anything. Fine, give a tap. Now what happens? It will not throw an error. I mean, the T T zero two second car EA not on corporate. We are given it only on corporate, na? Huh? Not on corporate. The most thing. How come? F six clear it now. We now go to the prices. Now fine, whatever. So prices set up. We now go there. We now query for the corporate. No, we will query more. Corporate, let me query it now. Here, I will not go on and in query. If I click on query mode, <clears throat> the product value is what? T02 percentage, and we query for it now. Second one, car is there actually. Each is a corporate active is there. Unit price. So it's a static formula. A static formula. Start date is the first of January. There is no end date talk. This is there. So I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. The qualifier is whatever. There is no qualifier at all. I've been there. In the pricing attributes, if you go on and see the pricing context, if you go there, click on it and then you drop it down. So we have a car context fine with that point. And then the pricing attribute, what happens? You go there. There's no list of values at all. But can I save at this stage? Commit, commit, commit. Close it. No, fine. I normally don't give anything at all here. Control F4. Close it now. 
a heart. We have to do nothing actually. So present conduction only means the feeling must be entered. Ah, what happened? Feel must be entered. So once I start to wait, what happens? Uh, it is not asking all this information. Not required at all. Also, no, feeling must be entered. Ah, I will not what happens? Go there and then kill this. How to come all of it now? Close, close the point. You go to the prices, you know. Uh, so what I will do is I will know first of all see whether without the formula it works or not. The CORP, CORP percentage. Query product name. And then here in the item number also I will know query, what is the query more? Product value is what P02 percentage. Then query product name. So here I will not give a value. I will not give a value and then remove the formula. One, two, three. And then remove the car formula. Tell it. If no double. Construction is complete now. Mm. Uh, the place on my orders. No, what I'm going to open up a sales order. Mm. So 11 43 is a customer. I'm going to go to the line items. You see, it's not much more. So it's a P02 percentage in the app. So I'm going to give a car. I'm going to go to one point and then give it up. So price is coming actually. So once when I put a formula only, it is not coming. What else is missing on the floor? You put a formula. While pricing a sales order, what happens? So, popular formula and the static formula and what us? While pricing a sales order, go to the pricing tab region and what happens? So, we will now, what happens? We will now go there and then do this activity now. Close it, no matter. Close it. Now go there, go to the prices set up. I'll now go there, go to the car percentage and then query for it now. So, here also, what happens? We'll now go to the query mode. So product value is what P02 percentage from the And then I will now put my formula over here in the static area. Remove this value. And then the static formula, whatever they go there, I will now put the value find whether it's a zero or one. And then go there. So we are given the value for a static formula. So the car formula is commit. It is all done now. Now let us now open up a sales order and we'll now before pricing this one, whatever we'll go to the context actually. So 1143 is the one sign, give a tap. And then I go to the line and I'm spending with it. And then here I will now put P02 percentage and then give a tap. And the one. So before I put the quantity, I go to the pricing area and then click on this descriptive flux field. Click on the descriptive flux field. So nothing is coming. Here it has to come. The pricing address. I will now go there. I will now put the pricing address as 01. Fine. So I'm now putting the pricing address. If I put the car age as what six, it will not accept at all because it must be between one to six now. 1 to 5 is not accepting it. So I will now give a value of what? 1 here. And then the core option drop down. I will now say it's a standard 1. So it is a multiplied by 1 and then divided by 1 actually. So we are now given the pricing context fine. The value is over here. Pricing one. We are give it. And then go to the main and then what happens? You give one quantity and then give it up. We are now getting price. Oh God. is not on corporate. T02, second car. And then each not on corporate prices at all. What is the mistake here now? <laughs> I am unable to find the mistake actually. Uh, not none for the formula. Is there a date effectivity? Date effectivity is not because the formula is coming here. Not clearly. If you go to the pricing, I am not getting the formula. The formula is coming. It's all coming here. On the pricing context, they given. And then the formula is being given. Fine. It is accepting everything for the particular one. And when you build the formula, did the concurrent program run fine or was there any error? You see, we, we are not, it didn't work at all. Fine. The build formula package didn't create any build. concurrence at all. Oh, God. There's a definitely a problem. Go to the window and then go to the place. Now. So, well, no, go on that, go to the formula and then build it actually. Fine. The formula is not built at all. Fine. I tried to, I didn't build at all. That is the problem. Good, good, good. So, that is the problem. So I will now go there. I will now go to the advanced pricing. I go to the what formulas. No fine pricing formulas. And then go to the pricing formulas. I have not built it actually. Even though I was telling you, but I have not done it. Before. Zero one percentage. I query for it. No fine bonus. I will now go to the tools, and then I will go to build. No fine. I have to build it. When I build it, what happens? It has to show me that it has it has completed successfully. The building. Yeah. This message didn't came at all last time. Got it now, fine. That is the problem. The build formula package generally successfully didn't came at all last time. So go to the sales order, something like that. 
So I will not go to the main area. I will go back to the one now. And give it the concurrent, uh, because this message did came last time as well. Last time also it came, huh? Yeah, I just check the concurrent right now. Oh, 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 you want me to check the concurrent actually. Mm -hmm. So I will not go there. I will have to put the concurrent now. Fine. It's not running at all. The build formula package. Let me explicitly run it now. Fine. Click on submit a new concurrent. Say, build percentage point formula percentage. Let me explain it. They're not running at all there. Build formula package is not there at all. This responsibility. So I will know what happens. I will know go to the pricing responsibility and run it. Close it. Fine. Let us know go to the pricing responsibility. Fine. Go there. The Oracle pricing manager global. Fine. In the Oracle pricing, oh, sorry. I have to go to the Oracle pricing manager global now. This Oracle. I will not choose Oracle pricing manager global now. Fine. Here I will not run it. All your alternator. It's called build build formula package. So I'm now running it explicitly. Thank you, Consul. So click on fine. Fine. It's not running. So last time when I'm running it from the tools build, it is not running. Fine. I'm now running it explicitly from the pricing responsibility because that is only having the concurrent actually. So from the pricing manager global, I'm now running it now. So you know got completed normal. And what I want. I will now come back to this place. Fine. Switch responsibility to order for the P02, not P02. Sorry. It is order management. Fine. Uh, order management, super reservation operations. You say, fine. Go there. Now open up a sales order. Go there. 11, 43 is the one. Fine. Go there. So go to the line items. I will go there. I will now put what? P02. Give it a tap. So I will now give the second car. I go to the pricing. And then I will now put the context over here. Now fine. Go there. So I will now say one year. And then this is standard now. I'm putting up the values for the flag. Uh, so I go to the main now. I'm clone. Can you give it up? Again, the same, the same thing. Car is, and each are not on corporate action. Oh, God. I assigned it only M, M1. Na? Assigned this item only to M1, actually. Go there. So the unit submitter is coming means what? The item is available on the shipping organization pointed to by this. It's already available. Then what else is not there? Oh God, <laughs> I'm unable to understand now. So uh, can you just add this concurrent program to the standard OM responsibility and run that build from there? Okay, so you know what this is me. And then yet I will add this one. So I will have to add it now. So I have to add it. So I will now go to the security. You go to the responsibility and then go to the request now. Fine. It's the OM concurrent program. OM percentage fine. Concurrent program. Fine. That is the one you have to set. So let me add. Not all over. I will not add up now. Build formula package. So I'm not adding it. So let me run it from this responsibility. So order management. Switch responsibility to order management. I will not run it from here. Fine. Alt we are alt and enter. Fine. So build fine build the percentage fine. formula percentage and what happens. So not having any parameters actually. Uh, after going on that form, uh, uh, run that uh, from, uh, from from the tools menu, not from here. Huh? Uh, oh, tools menu you are saying? Uh -huh. yeah, the tools yeah. menu you are asking me to run now. Right? So go yeah. to the formula now. Fine, present formula. Go to the formula setup. I will now go to this place, fine, over there. The zero one percentage fine and no, fine, over the tools, then build now. You know, building it actually. It is not done, fine, over there. Is there anything required? Now, now check uh, the concurrent is successful or not. Oh, look at the concurrent, no, fine. So, this concurrent has got completed by new log. Now we should be able to. package has been generated successfully and build formula successfully. There is no error at all anywhere. Now. Okay, we will now go there and then search for it. Otherwise, we will now leave it to you. And so, these are all the only steps which are required for this. Now, we will now go to the sales orders. 11, 4, 3, and then give it a happen. We will go to the line items. Line the order item fine over there. P02 percentage and give it tab. Second car. Go there. I will not go there. If you give one and then give a tab, the components are missing, it has to say. You should not say like this now. You go to the pricing, whatever the components are missing, it has to say. 
and then fifth one, and then one. <clears throat> the, the standard one and standard two, click on okay. And then I will not try to commit my let commit. I am now committing it at this stage now. Committing is now done now. Fine. Go to the main now. Fine. Go there. And then go there. Give a tap. I will now go for two quantities and then give a tap now. Oh, price is not coming at all. Control here. Online discounting is not allowed. Something has happened, but again, what happens? It is not exactly working actually. So we have a formula built actually. So what I will do is I will not discard it. Fine. Let me go to my responsibility in the middle. Fine. Go there. I will not go to the T02. Fine. Let me create an item. Go there. I will not get an because formula is generic. Fine. Formula and pricing attribute management are all generic actually. So we will not go on and create an item. Also. So uh, what I will do is I will now open up my whatever the enterprise list and go there. I want to query for it now. Fine. The T02 percentage and then query for it. So we have a price list. So for the first item, what I will do is I will now modify it. Go to the unit price. So I will now put the static formula of what 0, 1 percentage and then give a back tap. I will now remove the value. So the car formula has been added. So for the first item, I have now modified it. So go to this place. So the static formula has been added for the first item actually. So for the first item. Close it now. I will now open up the sales order and see it. So to the T02, fine, what I have now, fine, the cusp one. And then go to the line items and then have a look at the for the items. What is the T02 percentage? First, and then give it have now, fine, go for one quantity and then give it have now. Fine. Item not on T02 prices. So <laughs> that formula is not sensing at all in the pricing, or whatever. There is some other problem of 01 and give it have. And then it is one, and then it is a standard now. Click on okay. Go to the main note and go there. Two quantities on unit app. They given everything, but unit price is not to you. Some other mistake actually. Otherwise, the pricing will be coming very properly. So somebody make an R and D and then uh, what happens? Uh, teach us what is the missing factor now, right? Because I have done it on 12.2.6 now. Why now I'm doing on 12.2.12 .12 actually? So there may be some other extra steps which have been added. Fine, to go to our organization, you know, working on 12.2.12 .12 actually. So I did the last uh, training on 12.26 actually. <laughs> and then uh, this one is not coming up. Some something might have been added actually. Some more step is also required because of it. In price list, maybe for operating unit we have to do it, or it is global. We have to do it. That also you see. You know, fine. Go to the price list. No fine. So no query for it. No fine. Go to the T02 percentage and then query for it. No fine. So let us remove it and then try for it. Come here. <laughs> so no use specific. I now made it. I click on it. Close it now. I will open up the sales order. No fine. Give on sales order. So go there. The T02 and then give it. I have no custom one. And then go to the line items and then see the T02 percentage fee percentage. And then give it a tap. Go for one corner and then give it a tap. It has to show me. This should not come at all. Go to the pricing. And then context. I'm putting it now. And then I'm not putting the value. Yes. Okay. And then if you go to the order information, go to the line items. So go to the main and then go for two corner and then give it a tap. It has to come. Committing is now giving a null price actually. Price is not coming at all. The formula is not getting evaluated. But formula is not giving any errors. First of all, it has to give error. When you give a tab, it has to say component number two and three are missing a value actually. So one thing is what you have to generate and then we have generated it. Fine. Generated the formula. Everything is successful, but operation success patient died. <laughs> Anna, can we try running these two concurrent programs I just pasted? Build attribute mapping rules and then QP maintain the denormalized data. It might work. I don't know. I'm not sure. Build what is it? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, build, build, build attribute, attribute mapping, mapping rules. Not fine, mother. So uh, we have this. Not fine. All PR alternate. Not fine, mother. Build. Bu. Build attribute mapping rules. So we don't have anything. Um, maybe it's in the pricing response. In the pricing responsibility. Can go to Will not go there. Point. Switch responsibility to what? Oracle pricing manager global. I go there. Alt PR, Alt and enter. The build percentage. P U I L D build percentage. So build attribute mapping rules. You also right now. Build attribute mapping rules. Almost submitted. 
build attribute mapping rules. I'm running it now. I'm not see this where it works or not. Altar. <clears throat> build attribute mapping rules. We are running it now. But we did it in the uh, one now. We already did it actually. Build attribute mapping rules has been done actually once. Anyhow, we are running it again. Mm -hmm. So after it is done, well, no, load and login and then again search for it. We'll also run the QP maintain denormalized data. That one also. Just I don't think it is relevant here, but we can try running it. What are the what are they now? No? Uh QP percentage uh, oh, normalize. Right. Yeah. Right. QP maintenance, the denormalized data and QP quality as well. So this is the one now. Maintain the yeah. data. And then you can give the price list name that we created. Yeah. Here I had to give what list header is what is that price, uh, price list I think yeah price percentage and so everything is prices <laughs> is not there actually price is not there be, the T percentage is not corporate corporate prices no fine mother I will not put T zero two mother the T zero two percentage yeah. manager. Either you can run for particular header ID or you can run for all also. All means all also know, is good. Yeah, all also you can do. All is also there, huh? Yeah, yeah, all also. No, no, all will not be there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now, 100 something you are seeing, right? First line. That is the first low and high is the highest. List letter O. What I have to do now? Here. Click on that 10 row and Select the OK. Click OK. Click OK, fine. You know, coming fine. Corporate prices is not. No, no, that's fine. Uh, remove high, high value. On high remove. Remove. Yeah. Give, so from this one on, everything it will not run. Okay. Yeah, 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 correct. Update all. Mm -hmm. So from the first one to everything, it is not going to update. Okay, now. Okay, now. You click on stop right now. You click on reference mode. So build attribute mapping rule is not running for such a long time. Oh, God. What is this here? Hold up. So that has got completed. Build attribute mapping rule. Why it is saying so much of a time actually? Build attribute mapping rule is the best one for what happens every advanced pricing activity actually. But it is taking such a long time. I don't understand. Yes. In the meantime, what happens? I'm going to go there and check the sales or not. So go to the place. I will go to what P02. <laughs> Open up a sales order. <clears throat> So it's a T zero two one and give it a cost one. I click on the line items. So go there with the T zero two percentage P percentage and give it a no. one quantity and then give it a tap. Still saying the same thing on you know, the pricing zero one over there. I mean, I will say with one and then standard. So click on the okay. and then go to this place. What are the line items? And here, what about it? Go there. Go to the main. And then give three corners and give it a three to the Now see the concurrent now. <clears throat> it has got completed actually. Felt attribute concurrent is completed. And again, make a sales order now. Close it. Clear the record. And then close it. Make another sales order now. See. T02 percentage. Something. Somewhere some mistake is there. So because of it, it's not exactly coming. <clears throat> the T02 percentage thing was that. So in the last one, what happens that we are having this problem? One of them that it has to say second and third and components of the prices is not there. No, what's the pricing? Zero one. Give that one on the standard. I will put some other value number. Click on the AZ. So zero one on the AZ. Click on it. Then go to the main and then go for whatever three point and then what happens? Find the prices more Okay, I leave it to you. Fine. And if you find out, please tell me. I will know what happens. Make a small record on this and then I will know what okay, Only thing is in the execution part, there is some problem somewhere. Right. So this is how the formulas has to work. Formula has to work. Build formula package and try out the most frequent changes will not be visible actually. So let us now put in the dynamic actually. You know, see, upon dynamic, what happens? It may even what happens to calculate it dynamically actually. I will now go to the price list. So go to the query mobile find P01 percentage. Man, let me query it now. 
Let us not change it dynamic number in this place. Let us not cut this formula and then put it in the dynamic. Cut it and then put it in the dynamic. So the system will be building it automatically. Dynamic. So go to the sales orders. <clears throat> T02. Test one. Fine. You go to the line items and then see. Okay. So it's a T02. Percentage. P percentage and then go there. One quantity and then give a tab. Yeah. See, this should come. So we got an error. Error in formula processing. So formula is this formula. Step two and three are not having any values at all because of which it is not doing anything. Errors in formula processing. Step one is a numeric constant. Step two is basically a factor list. Uh, step three is a factor list. And then step two is what? Your uh, uh, car context now. Right? The age, I think. The age. So these are giving fine. So this is a very correct one. Fine, correct one. Okay, now. And then you go to the pricing and then give this one. Zero, one. And then give it up. And then I will not say one. And then I will not say standard. You will have to okay. Now it is given. When go there, I will not go for two quantities and I'll give it a tap. The price will be coming automatically. So if you go to the pricing and then here, what happens? You go there, click on it, and then change it to what? I will not say is easy now. Click on it. Easy. Now it will be ten thousand. The price will be ten thousand. If I click on the multiplication factors, change my go to the and then I will not go for another day. Four quantities and give it a tap. The price will be ten thousand. If you go to the pricing and then here, what happens? You go there. And then here, I will not change the values. Not because it is it's called zero. Fine. I will not say four years old. Four years old and then AC, then it must be what? 2,500 only. Okay, fine. So 5,000 divided by 4 into 2 is 2,500. Go to the main and then go there. So click on one and then go there. The price is 2,500. It's working perfectly. So if you're putting it in the dynamic, it's working. Static means what? It is not exactly generating it actually. I don't know what the problem actually is. Good that we achieved this now actually. <laughs> So can you even say that you understood it? Fine. Put the formula on the dynamic. It's working actually. So it's again a very big concept. And then in the metallurgical industry, they have got 10 factors now. Fine. Permeability, viscosity, fine. They will not say humidity and then density. It's so many factors of them. And then the price is the costliest raw metal in the what happens whenever we import it from Australia, we will not make, make the laboratory test and then we'll not enter all the results on this. And then we will not finally find out the unit price actually. And we were using SAP at the time. So with SAP, what happens is the formula gets calculated and then it will be coming up over here. We were working on what happens the Ispath Industries Bombay. At the time, what happens the coal, uh, the coke, the metallurgical coke, which is imported from Australia, will now put all the factors, all the laboratory results on all the 10 factors of the formula and then derive the unit price per kg. What is the price actually? Is it clear? Fine. So put it on the dynamic, it's working actually. If it's static, it's not working actually. So we'll now have a break now, fine. It's now 7.5. So 7.15 p.m. India will be back at you. We'll be back by 7.15 p.m. India. Okay. Can somebody say yes to me? Did you understood it? 7.15 p.m. And Manoj, I'm now making yes. a co-host now, fine. Make co-host. Go there. Jnana also, I'll now make it the co-host. Make co-host. So go there. So let me leave and then come back. <clears throat> 7.15 p.m. We are now back. <clears throat> 